Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of Collecting Canadian Cavalry and Armour. Today, as you can see, we're going to take uh, a look at some of the Windsor Regiment stuff that, that we have. We're going to concentrate on uh, cap badges, collar badges, and that type of thing. We'll leave the uh, some of the cloth and some of the other stuff to episode 2 or 3 or 4, depends on, on how far it gets here. So, let's take a quick look here at some of the, we'll start with the cap badges. You can see along the front here, well, I guess not the front to you. Um, so we have the standard issue cap badge, right? Nice, uh, you know, kind of a gold wash uh, on them. Uh, we have the slider on the back. We'll take a close look at these things in a, in a minute. Uh, then we have next to it is another metal cap badge. But this one is interesting. This one was made for the forage cap. Uh, you can tell that because on the back, and we'll, again, we'll take a closer look. You have one screw post and the pin that you could affix it to the top of the uh right to the front of the forge cap and this isn't a one i've got two of these in my collection so it's uh i'm pretty sure that that's exactly what's going on there now we also have the officer's bimetal cap badge it's a nice heavy one you see the screw posts on the back this one uh hasn't been polished in a while but that's okay uh so we have then I saw, and again, that one would they would wear them either on the beret or on the uh, on the forge cap uh, as well, because as you can see, it's the bimetal with the silver here, uh, and this one doesn't. So this would have been for the uh, non commissioned ranks and uh, for the officers. Now next to them we have the wire bullion badges. Uh, as you can see, they're all slightly different, different manufacturers. Uh, now, the story with these things is, depending on the, who the commanding officer was at the time, some guys wanted to stick with the bimetal badge, other COs wanted the, uh, the bullion badge. Some gave the officers the option, they could go either way. Anyway, uh, so those are there, so you have different time periods, different manufacturers, that kind of thing. Now on the end, we have a couple of interesting badges. Now these ones actually were worn by uh, the uh, supplied to the regiment on uh, the soldiers could buy them out of the kit shop they were running uh, low on officers badges and that and in uh, the regular badges for the other ranks uh, after doing some shopping around they decided to go with Guthrie Woods and you can on, on the back we'll take a close look at this too but you can see the maker mark will be right here on uh, but these are good these are actual real ones regiment badges that uh, guys in the unit did wear uh, because they know somebody's going to look at it and go, hey, it looks a little funny. It was a uh, stopgap measure uh, just to make sure that the guys uh, guys had their hat badges. Speaking of hat badges, the old combat cap badge here. Um, I happened to be in the regiment when, uh, when they got these. They did one run, and that was it. And everybody was issued one that was there at the time. So there's maybe like 150, 200 of these things kicking around. They seem to be pretty hard to find. Uh, so I'm very happy to have one. Uh, that's probably the one that I was issued. I probably took it off my hat uh, to put in the uh, in the collection, because that's just what we do. So over here, we've got a variety of collar badges. It was decided uh, sometime uh, in the past that when the guys were wearing their blue uh, patrol jackets, that uh, the SEAL or the RSM at the time, whoever, wanted bullion badges so these were made up to wear on the uh, to wear on the patrol dress and then they fell out of use and they were disposed of uh, given away at dinners and that type of thing then it was reinstituted and we have uh, the smaller set here and again you know uh, my awesome cameraman and producer will do some uh, close-ups here we have bullion badges again these were uh, and still are for the mess dress, for the for the uh, for the mess dress on the collars here. When these were when they were looking at doing these, they they came out with a set that was about twice as large as they should have been. Uh, those were almost all disposed of, uh, but I was able to to grab a couple for the collection because that's again that's what we do. Down here you can see we have what appears to be a bimetal. Collar badges. Now remember we saw those uh, ones that were done for uh, in the Essex Regiment tank the last episode that Colonel Walker had. 
These ones upon closer inspection looks like somebody just painted them with silver paint. Uh, kind of maybe a, an officer just did that at home or something. I don't know. So here we have the current issue collar badges. And on the back, you can see that they have the regular push pins there. And below them, we have an older set that have the lugs in their solid back. And they appear to be, to have kind of a gold wash on them. They're, they're very nice. Perhaps they were uh, fixed up for an officer or something. But very, very nice to have. I've only got a couple sets in my collection. Uh, so that leads us on to the buttons. We have uh, the large brass buttons that were on the original patrol dress and then we have the current ones uh, that are worn on the distinctive environmental uniform or the DEUs. We have a uh, lapel pin here that uh, you can use uh, actually for for buttons you know like uh, instead of studs on the mess dress a lot of the guys wear these things very nice and, and there's, a, there's a whole bunch of, we'll get into this in, in the later episode uh, tie tacks and tie bars and just all that kind of stuff. There's tons of stuff, right? As uh, tends to happen with every regiment. Just, you know, me being an ex-Windsor. Well, once a Windsor, always a Windsor. So we have this sweetheart pin here with uh, rhinestones. Uh, looks very nice. My wife has one as well that she wears uh, whenever we go out to military function. Here we have one of the old uh, shoulder title, brass shoulder titles. Uh, there were actually two versions of this to come out. Uh, we have this one here, which is all solid, and the uh, uh, the other version uh, in here with a large W and R, they're voided in there. So it's just a matter of trying to track one down. And then we have the, the current one that's uh, used now with the screw posts on the back. Uh, down here we have three versions of the Blazer Crest. And like we talked uh, before when we did the episode on Blazer Crest, you get lots of different variations. Uh, and that just shows uh, three of the, the ones that we had. We have the brass belt belt buckle that was used uh, when the guys were still wearing the battle dress. And then they brought these back uh, when we had the garrison dress. And if you remember, we were talking about trade badges. Uh, in a previous episode, I had the, the garrison dress behind me. Uh, that was the uniform that the guys uh where the brass buckles but lately so over here we have exercise crest or badges back in uh, 1980 i think it was 85 during mill con it probably would help with more glasses on but anyway uh so 23rd uh armored regiment so that's kind of a neat little badge to pick up and then we have this one here for the third armored recce regiment and uh, what they did is uh, we used to have uh, Canadian flags on Velcro on the side here when they, they first came out with the uh, uh, CAD pad. And so all the different units that made up that uh, concentration exercise during uh, the summer, each regiment or formation would have their own badges. So this is kind of neat to have a 3rd Armored Recce Regiment. And on the end here... Uh, my old friend, Percy Labby, who has since passed away, God rest his soul, uh, was actually on this combat leadership uh, competition back in the uh, very early 60s, and uh, they won. They were Western Ontario uh, champions, and so this is the blazer, uh, like the jacket crest that they had, and I'm very, very fortunate to pick one of these up. It's the only one I've ever seen, so it's uh, kind of nice to have. So what we'll do now is we'll take a close-up of some of these things that you could you know get a better look at oh wait a minute wait a minute i forgot this one here now this badge here as you know uh let's hold this one up for comparison when we talked about the badges of the armored corps the very distinctive tankers badge was always worn on the upper right sleeve okay so a few years ago uh we had a regimental sergeant major that decided for some reason that he wanted to continue wearing, bring that back for the DEUs and we want to continue wearing it. But for some reason, and I have no idea why, he decided to make it so that it would be worn on the lower left sleeve. No idea why he thought that was uh, historically correct or anything. I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want to embarrass him. Uh, you know, he should be. Uh, 12 RBC, 
right? Uh, who is the, of course, the, uh, I don't know what the, what the word, I'm lost for words. Anyway, they were formed out of the uh, Three Rivers Regiment, right? Who was one of the original six tank units. So uh, I do believe that any of the regiments that are still around, though, were one of the six originals, are authorized to wear the First World War tank badge. Now, 12 RBC, of course, wears it in the proper place up here on their ceremonial uh, uniforms. And I do have a picture of that, and we can, we'll show you uh, here of uh, these two different badges being worn. So the other unit would have been, of course, the, uh, the Ontario's and the King's Own Calgary would be authorized to wear those as well. Whether they do it or not, I don't know. I haven't, uh, haven't seen them. So anyway, that's, and yeah, you can probably tell it, it kind of really bugs me. But it's okay. I'll get over it, maybe. So, episode one, right, of the Windsor Regiment stuff. So we've covered collar badges, hat badges, this kind of stuff. Next time around, we'll probably get into all the different shoulder titles. There were a few different variations. Uh, that's an interesting one. A lot of that stuff is featured, of course, in Bill Alexander's wonderful book, The Fabric of War. Guys, you got to pick up the books. Got to pick up the books. So let's take a look, a close look at some of these other badges. Here's a closer look at uh, at these collar badges. As you can see the size difference between these two more modern uh, versions of the, of the wire badge. Again, these ones weren't used. They were found to be too big, and these ones were used are being used on the mess kit. And in one of the other episodes on the Windsor Regiment, we'll show you these being worn on, on a set of uh, NCO mess kit. And again, we've got these earlier ones uh, that came here. Here's a good view of the, the, the uh, officers' uh, collar badge. Again, these are not authorized. Uh, I think some officer just went ahead and did this, but kind of a neat addition to the collection. And again, just down here, we'll just flip this over so you can see the lugs on the back, and it was solid. And uh, these mark the uh, the earlier versions, probably from the, the you know the, the 50s and 60s and stuff. So those are the collar badges. Here's an interesting badge I want to show you guys. Uh, it was common practice during uh, the time when the guys were in the battle dress in the 50s and 60s that when an NCO attained substantive rank, which means uh, that he had taken the courses and you know became a sergeant as opposed to acting rank. They would get a miniature of the badge to wear above the rank, uh, except uh, if there was a crown of all. So a staff sergeant would wear the would wear this uh, over top of the stripes, but under the crown. Uh, for warrant officers, uh, class one, class two, they would wear that under the rank because to show respect for the monarchy, of course. And as you can see, it's basically just the center motif of the of the cap badge. But that shows substantive rank. And uh, when one of these days when I can finally get my uniforms out of storage and, and we display them properly, uh, I'll show you a uh, example of this uh, being worn actually on the bush dress, which is uh, very nice. On the back, it's just a clutch pin uh, fastener here, or not clutch pin, but uh, just a regular pin. And again, this would just be put onto the battle dress. Kind of neat. So here's a close look at that uh, other ranks forage cap badge. I'll just flip it over right here so you can see the uh, you know, the clutch pin up here to stop it from spinning around and the single screw at the back. So like I said, I've got two of these in my uh, collection so I know they're not a one-off. They must have probably just did one run of them uh, for the uh, forage cap badges that they would wear with the uh, patrol dress and the band wore those as well even with the uh, with the battle dress so there you go so let's take a quick look at these uh, Guthrie Woods uh, cap badges so we have the officers version and the other ranks version now again like I said these were actually worn by by the regiment uh, as a bit of a stopgap until we could they could find uh, a better supplier and on the back you can see with it's marked Guthrie Woods so that'll have to be on there if you're looking for uh, for this particular variety of badges now you can see here when we compare the old officer's badge uh, with the uh, Guthrie Woods one, you can see how it's much thicker here and it's, it's a much better made badge, but this entered the call of duty when we needed it. So there you go. So there we go. 
part one of the badges and insignia of the Windsor Regiment. Uh, my old regiment, uh, once in Windsor, always in Windsor, they say. And really, it was it was where I got my uh, start in collecting the Canadian cavalry and armor. Because like I said before, I'm sure I mentioned this, I lied to myself. I said, I'm only going to collect the Windsor Regiment Essex tank stuff. Well, uh, then, well, I might as well collect the stuff, just the badges for the Corps. Well, if I'm collecting that, I'm going to collect all the cavalry. So here I am with a ton of stuff. But... Again, it's fun, right? It's the thrill of the hunt. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. A uh, lot more stuff coming up for the Windsors. Tons, tons more stuff. So I hope you enjoyed it. And keep coming back. Please like and subscribe. And, well, happy collecting.